for a second. So then we will uh, talk about, I guess, the actual stoichiometry of this. Now, let's just go over this. This is a conversion you have to know. One cubic decimeter is equal to one liter. Write that down somewhere. This is really important that you know this. One cubic decimeter is the same volume as one liter. They're both volume measurements. Now, that really won't be a big, big factor here. I mean, on some of these problems, you might be presented liters instead of decimeters. But understand, you know, if you look at this chart, I mean, 22.4 decimeters, cubic decimeters over a mole, this is the same thing as, you know, liters, 22.4 liters, okay? Just so you know this. Now, the other thing, though, take a look at number uh, five here. What unit is that given to you in? Centimeters. Centimeters, not decimeters, right? So you, so you have to think about this. You have to look at your units before you do every problem. Now, all this requires is one extra conversion, dimensional analysis like you used to do. Well, I'm going to show you. That's why we're doing this. So if we know one cubic decimeter is equal to one liter, uh, let me tell you this as well. One cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. This is the more important conversion. So how many cubic centimeters are in one cubic decimeter? Does anybody remember that conversion? What is it? Isn't it how many of these can make up one of these? It's a thousand. Okay, this is why we're going over this. This is why we're going over this, because you know it's a multiple of 10, that's good, but you don't remember which one it is. So, let's just review this. Let me give you this conversion, okay? One decimeter cubed is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters, just like one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, okay? Just so we can remember this. So, here's the thing. Let's say you're going to start, you're just going to do number five really quick. Yeah. But, it, like, I just want to give you an example. Say you're given a problem, okay, and it tells you, and this will just be any random problem. Let's say you've got uh, 400 cubic centimeters of uh, N2 gas, whatever, okay? Now, before you do anything, okay, before you do anything, you have to do what? Figure out the centimeters into decimeters? Yes, you have to convert this from centimeters to decimeters cubed. So, all you've got to do, a simple conversion, you know, cubic centimeters goes down here. What are you trying to get to? Decimeters. Cubic decimeters. And I just told you this conversion. One cubic decimeter is equal to? 1,000 cubic centimeters. So realistically, what's it? What does it become? Point. Yeah, point 0.4, you know, decimeters cubed, and two. And then, you go from there. then you would just go do the problem as normal. So this is just like one extra little step. It's only in like two or three of the problems. No, you don't. Okay. And here, and I will now explain why it has to be in decimeters cubed. Look, tool. I'd actually really prefer it if you did it that way. Yeah, but if you don't want to, that's okay as well. Yeah, please. Now, here's the deal. Why are we doing this? Because, look at your volume. If you're ever given a volume of gas at STP, STP is standard temperature and pressure, which we'll talk about later. But you have to have, I mean, to do any conversion, you got to have it in decimeters cubed. Now, I suppose I could give this value to you, in cubic centimeters, but I'd rather you just convert to this and use it as this because you can't do a conversion in cubic centimeters using that value. It does not match up. That's why you're converting to decimeters. Yeah. That's the only time you have to do it is when you're dealing with volume. Now, let me show you, uh, let's just do number one for the heck of it. Whatever the next two are, yeah.
All right, so we're going to do SP31. We're going to go from uh, cubic decimeters of hydrogen gas to uh, moles of hydrogen gas. Now, I rec I'm not making you draw the stuff now, but still please reference the chart just to make your life easier. I mean, let's look here. We are starting with a volume, and this is the first thing you got to recognize. Cubic decimeters is a volume measurement. So you're starting with a volume. You are then going to be going from volume down to moles. So when you go down to moles, this is just for your benefit. This is next. I, I, I moved it out of order because this fits in the most with what we're doing right now. Otherwise, this shows up at the end of the packet and you're like, what? Just trust me. It's SP31, page 18. Okay, there we go. Now, back to this. We've got, we're going from volume to moles. Now, you look at your chart, you're dividing by 22.4 cubic decimeters per mole. So just, you know. So that's our conversion. One mole is equal to 22.4 cubic decimeters. It's just a constant volume known experimentally, figured out. I'll prove it to you sometime when I get some dry ice. What? What is that? Oh, sorry. So, uh, next, let's actually just do this. This one's, this one's pretty simple. It's a one-step problem. It's just Now, you don't have to write down that it's H2 gas. The reason being, uh, if you assume you have cubic decimeters and you have hydrogen, you just are going to know it's gas, one would assume. So, decimeters cubed there, H2. What are we converting to? Moles. And we know that one mole is equal to 22.4. And then this is equal to, what does that math come out to be? Two. Simple. Cancel your stuff out. There you go. That's it. That's the answer, number one. Uh, now, I'm going to assume that you can do it the opposite way without me showing it to you. You can go back from moles to volume. All you got to do, moles to volume, you're going to multiply by 22.4. I'm expecting by now you can use this chart and you can be okay with it. So, questions on, on 31? All right. Go to the next one then, whatever the next one is. Uh, the two-step problems. 30, SP33? Yeah. Okay. So, is that going to be 18 What? I don't know, somewhere. Oh. Next, this is page 20, SP33. We're just going in order here. Like I said, this has already been well arranged, well thought out. The order is the order, except for those first couple that we skipped. Now, let me show you an example of these. So this is a two-step problem. Now, notice that it says all substances are gases at 273 Kelvin, 101.3 kPa. I don't really know what those mean yet, because we haven't, we haven't really talked about Kelvin temperature or, or pressure yet. And realistically, we won't until later, so don't worry about it. Just know that's STP. That's standard temperature and pressure. Now, uh, to begin with, what is this, SP? So we're going to convert this. What does it ask us to do? It says convert to volume at STP. So we're going all the way from molecules to volume. So we're starting down at the little at the bottom, and again, I'm just kind of drawing this out for you here. Yeah, it's two-step problem. So if you remember your path, you go volume to moles, or pardon me, pardon me, particles to moles, then to volume. 
Because you have to recognize, this is the one hard part, I guess, you have to recognize that a molecule is a particle. That's the one thing you got to think about. Otherwise, after that, it's pretty much, I would hope, easy. So, you divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Molecules per mole. Then, when you go from moles up to volume, you multiply by 22.4. Well, in this case, it's 22.4. If you're going from moles to volume, it is always this conversion. If you're doing something else, it can be different. But if you're going between here and here, this is what you always use. Now, you just got to plug it in. So start, start writing. You take uh, 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules N2. Now, your first step is going particles to moles, so you know you're dividing by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, your units, you know molecules has to go down here because, again, it's got to cancel out diagonally. You know that you're converting to moles because that's our stopping point. Then, next step, moles to volume. You're going to go with moles down here. You're going to volume, but you don't write volume. You write cubic decimeters. That is our volume unit. Just like for mass, you don't write mass, you write grams. Same deal here. And you know the conversion is 1, 22.4. That's what we're just what it says to do. So uh, figure out what it's equal to. What does it come out to be? Uh, Alright, that's what it should be. Yeah, so you're basically just cutting it in half. Now, I guess just make sure, make sure that your stuff cancels out. And you're left specifically with decimeters of N2, which is what we want. And you get, what was it again, 11.2? Alright. Are there questions on the two-step problem? Okay, then. You don't have to draw this stuff, okay? Don't have to do that. What I do want you to do, okay? You're gonna work on this. I mean, it's a decent bit, It's, uh, but again, I think it should go pretty quickly. And you just gotta do SP 31 and 33. So SP 31 and 33, okay? 